Welcome to another edition of Co-Pilots. And today, two of my favorite guys. We've got Braylon Edwards and Jericho Cotri. And Jericho, I'm going to let you take control first, okay? All right. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> all right. Do you remember the first time you met Braylon? We've had so many encounters, you know. <laughs> um, I just knew what type of guy, what type of player we were getting. We were getting a star player. We were getting a, a guy that was big, strong, fat, fast, physical. You know, playmaking guy. I didn't know what type of person we were getting. This guy was so <laughs> funny. I just, I didn't know he would, he would be this funny, you know? And my first encounter with him was just realizing how funny he was. The first time Jericho's name came up is my father was very involved with trying to see what my competition was in college. My dad was like, yeah, you, you gotta worry about Mike Williams at you know, USC and here's Rashawn Woods over here at Oklahoma State. And then there's Reggie Williams out here watching. He's like, and then you got this guy, Jericho Country, down here in North Carolina State. So I started focusing on Jericho. Like I started watching him and he was able to run routes. He was smooth, like he had great hands. Like I don't say this often, Jericho has better hands than me. What's your favorite Braylon story? Oh shoot. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one here always stands out. Don't to talk me. about the bowling alley. We were in practice um, and, you know, we were going against the defense and we were in, I think this was a red zone period and uh, we threw we threw a fade to Braylon and uh, he went up over Revis and he mossed him and everybody, everybody on the field went nuts. Later on in practice, we had a two minute drill and, uh, you know, everybody's tied in a two minute drill and he came back to the huddle and he bent over, he's like, man, it's like a war over there. We were like, what is he talking about? <laughs> and we went back to the film session and he looked at us and said, I told you. <laughs> Revis was pressing every play. Like he hit me with like one of like one of those Denzel Washington type moves and he got game. I couldn't breathe like the rest of two minute drill, man. He was still mad about seven on seven. Was that that one game that you guys remember for each for each other? That catch he had against Cleveland, his growing strain like a couple plays before that. And in that moment when we needed him most, he pulled his groin all the way, stretched out, caught it, made an amazing catch. And it it tells you, which Lloyd Carter used to always tell me, you have to give yourself to something greater than yourself. Talk about the team. Man, when he gave himself on that play, I was like, I said, that's football. I said, that's team. Like, I said, that's how you play the game. And it, to this day, I still think about it. There was a lot of plays, a lot of plays for him. I'll say this one and then I'll say the play that I, I want to describe him as. I had a 77-yard uh, touchdown against New England in the playoffs in uh, 2006. And he caught he caught an 80-yarder in the Colts yeah. in the Colts game in the AFC <laughs> Championship game. You know, he does his celebration, he's doing all of those things, you know, and uh, he comes back to the sideline and he comes he comes to me, hey, I got that record. <laughs> I had to take my congratulations back from you, you know? Yeah, as you should. The one that I love so much is um, the touchdown uh, before halftime, you know, in a divisional round against uh, the Patriots, you know? Backside, you know, backside one-on-one, -on -one, and we got the slant call, we need somebody to win. We know he's gonna win. Uh, guy's up there pressing, and he kills the guy, and the guy's just holding on for dear life. He's dragging guys into the end zone, and he just stretches out. Ah, you know, it's crazy. It, it's one of those moments where right. you feel that emotion. Everybody felt like they scaled, they scored the touchdown in that moment. What do you guys mean to each other? And for life, for me, you know. Uh, those moments there from the first encounter, you know. Uh, he's my guy, you know. <laughs> he's my guy, you know. And and I don't, I don't say that lightly. Jericho was just a consummate teammate. Like He was a consummate guy who was like, I'm gonna do everything I have to do for the team. I'm, I'm gonna help him do everything he can to do for the team. And he just meant so much to my transition from Cleveland to New York. He was that type of person that kind of helped me like go through a tough period in Cleveland, coming to New York in a new situation and try to find myself. He was a part of that, like a strong part of that. So yeah, I, I I'm very thankful for you, brother. Man, feeling this mutual, man. You want some? You want some tissue? Me? You want, you want some tissue? We about to cry over here. For me, I'm, I might cry when I get in the car. Man. I know, right? <laughs> he gonna cry when he get in the car.